Welcome to my channel TMZ The Malay Doc. I am Tuan Mohammad Zamir Karim, and in this video, I'll be discussing about the founder of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the fourth Prime Minister of Ceylon, Right Honourable S W R D Bandaranayake. Solomon Westridge Dias Bandaranayake, more famously known as S W R D Bandaranayake, was born at El House, a stately residence at Mutwal, Colombo, on the 8th of January 1899, into one of the elite native families under the British administration. The Bandaranayake family, with its close association with the British, had embraced Christianity at the close of the 19th century. and the boy was christened Solomon Westridge Wedayers Bandaranayake the godfathers being the governor of Ceylon Sir James Westridge Wey and justice Sir Harry Dyers Bandaranayake Mrs J P Obesekar and Lady S C Obesekar were SWRD's two godmothers the future prime minister of Ceylon was thus christened with a curious mixture of biblical english portuguese and sinhalese names He was an exquisite product of the decadent Ceylonese low country aristocracy. In fact, his father, Sir Solomon Dyas Bandaranayake, was the Mahamudaliar or chieftain and the aide de camp to the British governors of Ceylon, and he was one of the most powerful personalities in British colonial Ceylon. SWRD's paternal grandfather, Don Christopher Hendricus Dyas Bandaranayake, was the Mudaliar of the Governor's Gate and the Mudaliar of Sienakorula East. SWRD's mother was Lady Daisy Eslin Obesekara, daughter of Sir Solomon Christopher Obesekara, a member of the Legislative Council of Ceylon. In point of fact, Oriental scholar James De Alvis was SWRD Bandaranayake's maternal great-grandfather. He was the oldest of the three children and had two younger sisters, Alexandra Camellia and Anna Florentina. As per James Manners' expedient Utopian Bandaranayake's biography, S W R D was not sent to school for his elementary education. He was instead tutored at home by a Canterburyan scholar, an Englishman, A C Radford. It was Sir Solomon, the father of young Bandaranayake, who engaged Radford of Cambridge University as full-time private tutor to his son. The scholar from Cambridge not only introduced his prodigy to Chaucer and Milton, but also provided a thorough grounding in classics. When he reached the age for secondary education, he was sent to St Thomas's College and was boarded not at the hostel where all non-day scholars stayed during the school sessions, but at the warden's residence. Reverend William Arthur Stone was the warden at the time. Such was the aura of power that enveloped the Ceylonese aristocracy at the time. S W R D passed the Cambridge senior examination with distinctions in English, Latin. Greek and French gaining the second in order of merit in the British Empire that year. He spent 6 years in England. He studied between 1919 and 1925 at Christ Church College Oxford. During his time there he lived with a working class family as a shortage of rooms in the college had forced Christ Church to find lodgings elsewhere. Bandaranayake was struck by the hierarchical structure and social conventions that excluded him from the student fraternity. During his year at Oxford, his father moved to London for a year together with his sister who was presented as a debutante at Buckingham Palace in 1920. Bandaranayake tried hard to fit in and found it difficult to deal with his fellow students' rejection. especially considering his own family's preoccupation with status and power in 1920 he was allotted a room in Christ Church College sharing a corridor with former british prime minister anthony eden after passing his classics exam with a second class degree s w r d bandaranayake switched to law In his third year at Oxford he became actively involved in the Oxford Union delivering speeches on democracy policies on India and the British government policies in Egypt He established himself as a regular speaker at the union and his performance was praised in the Oxford magazine for his vigorous thinking and his animated insistent delivery In June 1923 he became secretary of the Oxford Union and in March 1924 he was elected junior treasurer. 
His exposure to Indian nationalism at Oxford had a profound impact on his world view. It led him to conclude that his father's political support for the British and the feudal system in Ceylon were anachronistic. S.W.R.D. Bandaranaike was an intellectual and a great orator, whom the Indian Premier Jawaharlal Nehru called the silver-tongued orator of Asia. He was a keen, useful tennis player, and in his younger days he played tennis at Oxford and won several amateur championships in Ceylon. He also enjoyed hunting, but when he converted to Buddhism, he gave up the sport. He was an ardent lover of dogs, favored greyhounds, and there was at all times a greyhound in his house. His kennels have also won prizes at local dog shows. He wrote some short stories, enjoyed both bridge and billiards, and he enjoyed reading Greek classics in his downtime. Bandaranaika returned to Ceylon in 1925 and became actively involved in the island's politics and independent movement. He was elected to the Colombo Municipal Council in 1926 and joined the United National Party. In 1936, he was elected as Minister of Local Administration and created the Singhala Mahasabha in 1937. In 1940, he married Sirimao Ratwate a Singhala Kulakantava, or noble lady, who hailed from the prominent Kandy Radhala aristocratic Ratwatta clan. Following the death of his father, Sir Solomon, Bandaranaika inherited the family seat of Haragolla Walawa in Attanagala. Attanagala eventually became his home constituency for the future elections and remained the home constituency of his wife, daughter and son. In 1947, as a prominent member of the governing United National Party, he was elected to the new House of Representatives and appointed Minister of Health and Local Government. He resigned from the government on July 12, 1951, following differences of opinion. He was re-elected in 1952 as a founder of the Nationalist Sri Lanka Freedom Party, becoming leader of the opposition in the legislature. Four years later, he formed the Mahajana Eksat Peramuna, People's United Front, a political alliance of four nationalist socialist parties which swept the election. He became Prime Minister on April 12, 1956. Mahajana Eksat Peramuna advocated a neutralist foreign policy and strong nationalist policies at home. Sinhalese, the language spoken by the majority community, replaced English as the official language of the country and Buddhism, the majority religion, was given a prominent place in the affairs of state. By amicable agreement, the British relinquished their military bases on the island and Ceylon established diplomatic relations with communist states. A disgruntled Buddhist monk, Taldue Somaramatero, shot Bandaranaika on September 25, 1959 at Tintagal, the private residence of the Bandaranaikas on Rossmith Place, Cinnamon Gardens, Colombo 7 and SWRD died the following day. After the 1960 elections, his widow Sirimao Ratwate Dias Bandaranaika became Prime Minister of Ceylon and served as Prime Minister three times and was the leader of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. She was the first female to be elected head of government in the whole world. Bandaranaika's children in the meantime had become major political figures within the SLFP. His daughter Chandrika Bandaranaika Kumaratunga subsequently became Prime Minister and the first female executive president in the country. His younger son Anura Bandaranaika went on to become Speaker of the Parliament of Sri Lanka and a minister and his eldest daughter Sunetra Bandaranaika is a prominent philanthropist and chairs the Sunetra Foundation. Hello to you watching on YouTube. If you want to see more videos, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and do not forget to leave your comments. And please do not forget to check my other video on Sirima Ratwatidaya's Bandaranaika who became the world's first female Prime Minister.